Welcome. Uh, my name is Tyler Wagner with Wagner Real Estate here in Havertown, Pennsylvania. And uh, as we are navigating our way through this pandemic, uh, we wanted to take some time to bring you some great resources and highlight some local businesses uh, that might be able to help you out uh, now and, and in the future. So uh, today I'd like to introduce Tom Mitros of uh, Mitros Insurance. Uh, personally gotten to know Tom over the last couple of years and uh, he's come, come a great resource uh, for me and, and many of my clients. And I thought he'd be a great person to bring, bring to everyone else here and uh, you know, give you some good, good highlights about the insurance business. Um, you know, what I've found in the insurance business is the less you know, is the bigger chance you got to get you get hurt, and uh, you know you find out later when it's when it's too late. So wanted to bring Tom in for that reason. Um, so Tom grew up in Broomall, went to uh, graduated Marple. We won't hold that against him. Um, and uh, he has uh, started his independent uh, insurance business back in 2007. So uh, Tom, welcome. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks for having me. And hello to everybody out there. Um, this is a time that we've probably never experienced before in our lives and hopefully never again, but we're, we're going to try our best to help you out through this tough time. Sounds good. So uh, how about we start with uh, a little background about uh, you and your business? Sure. Uh, so started the business in 2007. Uh, currently, we have four employees, in including myself. Um, we're about 30 to 35 percent commercial uh, property casualty policy. So that means general liability, workman's comp, business auto. And then we're about 70% personal lines business, which is more of your standard auto and homeowners insurance uh, type of customer. Sounds good. All right. So you, so you work with businesses and, uh, you know, as we both know, businesses are struggling a lot right now. They're dealing with a lot of things. Um, you know, what, what kind of advice and uh, things should they be looking out for right now? Or would you, would you tell them? Yeah, sure. So first, you know, have a conversation with your agent. Uh, insurance companies are doing one or two things with regards to payment plans. You can possibly skip April's payment and have it be delayed to May. Hopefully things are running by then. And yeah. also if you were on a pan where you played quarterly or maybe that quarter payments due or paid in full, switch to maybe paying over 12 months. Uh, the other thing is, you know, payrolls and gross revenues. Your general liability and your workman's comp policies are most likely rated off of one of those two things, which most likely the payrolls or, or revenues are not the same. So call your agent, see if they can be adjusted to lower the premiums on your general liability and workman's comp. Now, once things get rolling again, make sure you call them back, adjust them, because the last thing you want to do is to get hit with a big audit. And then as far as your business owner policies, um, if your vehicles are you know, truly not being driven, uh, maybe they're in a garage somewhere or in your garage, uh, you can think about if the car is not financed, uh, either raising the collision deductibles okay. or removing the collision deductibles if it's not financed as a way to lower the auto premium. But again, I would only do that if the vehicles aren't being driven and they're parked safely in a garage or driveway somewhere. Okay, sounds good. Right. So, so from a, from a homeowner perspective, um, you know, what are you hearing from homeowners? Is there anything there that they should uh, make sure they're doing or, you know, can do there? Is there, you know, what, what kind of stuff there? Yeah, sure. So same thing we talked about with the uh, delaying or skipping of payments. That's always an option, you know, have a conversation with your agent. Um, homeowners insurance, there's, there's less you can do because A, the mortgage requires you have it. B, yeah. a fire can still occur during this time, you know, God forbid. Um, you possibly could raise your deductible. Again, you're putting yourself more at risk if the claim did occur, you have a higher deductible, but it's a way to lower the premium if needed. Another thing you may do is, you know, maybe you have jewelry that's scheduled on the homeowner's policy. Well, people aren't traveling. They're not going out the way they used to. So maybe if you or your wife, you have a discussion and say, listen, we can remove our jewelry coverage, but we're going to put it in this box and we're going to put it in a safe place that only they know about, you know, that the kids can't take, you know, put it up high if you have four-year-olds because Lord knows they get into everything. Your wife can't win the, if you're going to take it off the policy, she can't take, you know, your wife can't wear the engagement ring when she's going to the food store with the gloves and mask on. That's got to be a way. So that way, you know, it doesn't leave the premises. Um, but that's another option for the homeowner. As far as the auto insurance side, as I mentioned on the commercial, um, if you have a vehicle, so maybe you're a two car family, but now neither of you are working. So now you really only need one car. Maybe that other car you keep in the garage. If it's not financed, of course. If it's financed, you, can, you could raise the deductible, but if it's not financed, you could remove collision coverage and keep it in the garage or, or you know, far up on the driveway so it's not going to get hit by another vehicle. You're not driving it, so you're not going to get to an accident with it, and it's a way to reduce your auto premiums. So again, to, to cap that is you can remove collision coverage um, from that one vehicle if you're not driving it, but again, it's got to be either in a driveway or a garage where you know it's not going to get hit. Um, and then the other option is call your agent and have that conversation. 
you may have been rated for having a 20 mile commute and driving 15,000 miles a year. Yeah. Now you're, you're not driving. So we've been, we've been moving some of our customers from pleasure use and under 8,000 miles a year, which gives a 15 to 20% discount. And then the other elephant in the room is we're all hearing of all these companies make announcements of what they're doing. Uh, so just keep an ear out to hear what your company's doing. Um, I think in the end, the most will do something. It just, each one will have their own spin on what they're going to do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to houses, the one thing that I know we've had come up a little bit here lately too is um, the sewer laterals. And I, and I believe, I think we've talked about this before. Um, you can, I mean, that's just one thing I'm also thinking people are at home, <laughs> they're using their bathrooms or, you know, there's a lot more during the day where there was never any of that kind of use. So everything's like a little heavier use on your house. Um, that's something too, right? That they can get covered through their insurance policy. Yeah, the two coverages, the um, service line coverage is definitely something where most companies now offer that. It's coverage for the underground piping that is on your property that you're responsible for. Okay. Uh, many of us have gotten letters from Aqua. It's the same yep. type of coverage, but now you can get it through your insurance policy and probably for a lot less expensive than what Aqua is charging. Huh. Um, okay. And then as we mentioned, you know, we've, we've talked about you, me, Tyler. If you have the sump pump in the basement, we're getting to the spring season. Um, you know, more rain, some higher winds in the last two nights. I mean, I know I was woken up to some heavy winds. You want to make sure if you have a sump pump and a finished basement that you have the backup of sewer and drain coverage uh, because the last thing you want to do right now is spend six to eight grand to refinish your basement if, God forbid, something happens. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that's great. Um, I'm sure, you know, people have lots of other questions. Uh, they'll have to, you know, they can reach out to you, Tom, uh, directly. We'll have your information here uh, on, the, on the sheet and we can answer any questions and comments. Uh, but certainly, uh, feel free to reach out to Tom. Uh, he's got a wealth of knowledge and uh, can certainly help you out. You know, we need to, yeah, you need to look at your finances these days and, and see which ways you can make adjustments and be smart and make sure your coverages are good. I mean, it's also important to have good coverage so you don't get caught in a situation that actually you know, makes you in a worse situation. Right. Um, so, you know, I don't think it's a good recommendation to say get rid of uh, insurance coverages necessarily at this time either. <laughs> Uh, you got to be careful. Um, but yeah, thanks, Tom. I really appreciate it. And, um, you know, to everyone else, please stay safe and uh, take care. Thanks, Tyler, and everybody stay safe. All right, thanks. Thanks.